Today we're talking about why 120 over 80 is not actually a normal blood pressure. If you wanna truly understand your numbers, you have to rethink what normal even is. But the problem is most people, even doctors, still treat 120 over 80 like the gold standard. Here's the truth that may surprise you. The top cardiology studies have made it clear that vascular damage begins with blood pressures in the 120s over 80s. The secret is actually simple. The real safe zone is lower than what most people think. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly why 120 over 80 is a bit outdated, what the new normal actually is, and how you can start shifting your numbers into the range that best protects your heart, brain, and future health. First, where exactly did 120 over 80 even come from? For decades, 120 over 80 was taught as the normal blood pressure. It was a neat round number, easy to remember, easy to chart, and passed down through literal generations of medical teaching. But in the last decade, new research has caught up with this somewhat archaic paradigm. Larger studies like the Framingham Heart Study and the SPRINT trials back in 2015 showed that people with blood pressures sitting around 120 over 80 were actually at higher risk of developing heart attacks and strokes than those with lower numbers. This means what we used to call normal isn't actually optimal. So what has actually changed? Well, if you're watching this in 2025, we've had a recent update to our guidelines by the American Heart Association, as well as the American College of Cardiology, and these are pretty similar to the guidelines that were initially changed back in 2017. In fact, back eight years ago, about 31 million Americans who were told they have normal blood pressure ended up developing hypertension overnight. What prompted this change is that doctors wanted to catch blood pressure problems and cardiovascular disease earlier before strokes and heart attacks happen. So what are these new updated guidelines? Well, starting with normal blood pressure is now considered anything 120 over less than 70. Now you may think that if your blood pressure is slightly above 120 over 80, let's say 124 over 82, you would just go up into the next stage and be considered elevated, right? But let's take a look at the numbers a little more closely. Elevated blood pressure is considered a systolic blood pressure or the top number of 120 to 129, but a diastolic number less than 80. Notice the shift here, and this is a big one. What many people used to call normal or 120 over 80 is no longer considered safe because the diastolic blood pressure of 80 actually puts you into stage one hypertension. So according to the American Heart Association, as well as the American College of Cardiology, if your diastolic blood pressure is greater than 80, you technically have stage one hypertension. Included in stage one hypertension is a systolic blood pressure of 130 to 139. Stage two hypertension is a systolic blood pressure 140 or greater, and a diastolic blood pressure of 90 or greater. So today, as of 2000, 2025, 120 over 80 isn't necessarily considered to be the safe middle ground. It's now the border between normal and stage one hypertension. So why do these changes in blood pressure actually matter at all? Well, think of blood pressure like water pressure in a garden hose. A little bit of pressure is good. You actually need pressure to get the water moving, but too much pressure over a certain period of time begins to wear out the inside of the hose. Your arteries are like that garden hose. And studies show that microscopic damage to the inside lining of arteries begin as early as blood pressures showing 115 over 75. The key takeaway is this. Even borderline readings are creating stress on your heart, arteries, and your brain. So what is the ideal pressure that you should actually be aiming for? Most researchers and astute practicing physicians now agree that the sweet spot for long-term health is around 115 systolic and around 75 diastolic. So the new normal of 120 over 80 has now decreased by five points on the top and bottom numbers to 115 over 75. Now, one important thing that I don't want you to take away from this video is advocating to push your blood pressure as low as humanly possible. We need blood pressure to live, and if blood pressure isn't high enough, we actually get side effects and other symptoms like dizziness, fatigue, 
lightheadedness, to passing out. Now, if your home monitor consistently shows blood pressures well above 120 over 80s, here's what you can do. Track your numbers consistently. Don't just take random readings here or there. Write down your blood pressure readings in the morning and in the evening every day for about a week. When you check your blood pressure, do two different readings separated by about a minute each time and record the lower of these two values. Secondly, lifestyle pays off hugely. Exercise, weight management, reducing alcohol, getting better sleep, and stress control can lower your blood pressure by five to 10 points naturally. And the last thing is know your risks. If you have diabetes, kidney disease, or a strong family history of uncontrolled high blood pressure, even borderline readings deserve more attention. Now, if you can't remember everything that we talked about in this video today, that's totally fine. I put together a free resource that has everything you need to know about exactly where your numbers should be for optimal health. You can grab that PDF completely for free down below with the link in the description. Now, if you wanna know the absolute best things that you can start doing today in order to lower blood pressure naturally, but are just unsure of where to start, I highly recommend checking out this video where I break down the top five things that you should start doing to lower blood pressure naturally.